Hey, good morning, Mount Olive family. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. It is so good and it's so exciting to be with you this beautiful Friday morning. I'm so happy to be with you as we continue to walk through Matthew's gospel and as we continue to make our way through his writings and as we continue to just get to know Jesus better, to continue to dig into the word, to continue to be strengthened in our faith as God's word continues to go out and it continues to shape and reshape hearts and change lives, all pointing to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and the love and the grace and the forgiveness that he offers everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Karen. It's so good to see all of you this morning. It's so good to be with you. And our text for this morning is Matthew 21, and this is G Matthew's account of Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. This is his account on the text, what we would call Palm Sunday in the church year and in the church calendar. So we get to hear about Jesus riding into Jerusalem as he kicks off the event of what we know as Holy Week. We know that Holy Week starts with the triumphal entry, and then it just continues to progress and goes to Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and eventually Easter Sunday. So good morning, Donna. Uh, my question for you this morning is, have you ever been a part of a parade? Or if you haven't, do you like to watch parades when they're on TV? So what experience or what joys do you have when it comes to parades? I think the only parade that I've ever known about has really been the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I remember that would be on a couple of times in my, my grandparents' house or my aunts and uncles' houses. Uh, before football got started, they would usually always have the parade on the TV and you'd see you know, everybody coming down. You'd have marching bands, you'd have giant inflatables, you'd have different businesses represented that could be a part of it but I always remember seeing the giant inflatable turkey just kind of hovering over the parade and it was a it was a beautiful thing because it communicated hey Thanksgiving is here so my question like I said have you been a part of any parades and if you haven't been do you have a favorite parade that you like to watch so I want you to answer that in the comments yep Betty says the Labor Day Parade. Yep, that's always a good one. I'm not too familiar with it, but I know, <coughs> excuse me, I know that they usually pull out some Labor Day parades, maybe some Christmas parades. But as you guys are letting me know, as you're typing it in in the comments, we are going to turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. And this, like I said earlier, is Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So here we go. I've got my ESV Bible with me. If you've got your Bible with you, go ahead and get it out, and we will dig into the text. So here we go. Matthew 21. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a beast of burden. So right here we see Jesus fulfilling prophecy. We see Jesus fulfilling words that had bitten, been written long ago, that he is fulfilling prophecies that had been written hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus ever came into this world through his birth of the Virgin Mary. And so we see Jesus saying, you know what? By my word, by my power, you're going to go find this. You walk into the city, you're going to look for this. It's going to be there. And then you untie them. And if the owner comes out and starts giving you any trouble, all you have to do is say, the Lord needs it and he will release it to you. So Jesus, like at this point in history, Jesus has accumulated a following. People know about him. People know who he is. And people know that he is proclaiming the kingdom of God and that he is the son of man and that he is 
this miraculous rabbi, that he is Lord. So when people say the Lord has need of it, they know exactly who they're talking about. So when the disciples go down and find this colt and this donkey, and they say the Lord has need of it, the owner is going to know exactly who they're talking about. Jesus needs this. Great. I'm happy to help out. We continue on in verse 6. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put them on and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds went before him, and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. So right here, we get to see Jesus's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Luke also records this in his gospel, which we went through a couple weeks ago in our sermon series as we w went through the gospel of Luke. And there's a lot of overlap here between what Matthew has written down and what Luke has written down for us. Now, traditionally in the church here, in the Palm Sunday services, you know, maybe some of us have had the sanctuaries decorated or we've put out cloaks or we've decorated the aisles with palm fronds or palm branches or anything like that. Or maybe we've even had palm branches that we would wave around. Now, we didn't necessarily get to do a lot of that this year because of the pandemic, but the significance of this. So maybe some of us are wondering why palm branches? Why, why is that a big deal? So if we know some of our Jewish history, so there was at one point a Jewish revolt, a Jewish rebellion against the surrounding nations. And that was led by Judas Maccabeus. Now Judas had led this army. He had led this Jewish revolt and drove out all the enemies of Israel. And what they did when they did that, and when Judas made his entry into the city, they waved palm branches as a celebration of victory. And Judas didn't want anybody to forget this. So for a while, their money actually on the back of it kind of like you and I have heads and tails sides of coins on one side of it he actually engraved or J Israel engraved palm fronds on the back of their coins as a reminder of the victory that the Jews had in that revolt and that they drove out the enemies of Jerusalem they drove out the enemies of Israel so there's a pretty cool connection here so how Jesus is connecting this victory that Israel remembers and that Israel was a part of. And now we're talking about a new kind of victory. Jesus is marking his entry into Jerusalem to kick off Holy Week, to go to the cross, to be tried, to suffer, and ultimately to die. Not for his own gain, not for uh, some random statement, but for the victory of sin, for the victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. So just as those palm fronds communicated the victory over Israel's enemies, Jesus marches to Jerusalem and eventually he marches to a cross where he would suffer and he would die and he would pronounce a new victory. He would pronounce a victory over sin, over death, and over every trick and tactic that the devil has to throw at us. And the beautiful thing about Jesus, when he rose, he promises you and me and all who call on him as Lord and Savior, that we share in that victory too. That just as Jesus is victorious over sin and death, you and I will be victorious over sin and death, not by anything that we do, but because of what has been done for us and who did that for us. Who did that? Who won that victory for us? The Son of God, God in the flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, accomplishes that victory for you, for me, and for Christians around the world. And that's the beautiful message that we get to carry out. That's the message that we live our lives by, that Jesus is victorious, that there's nothing in this world that can take away what he has done. There is nothing that we can do to dampen or lessen the victory that we have in Christ. And we are called and we are freed to live in him, to live in his love, his grace, and his forgiveness. And we are free to spread that message to all who would hear it throughout our lives. So church, let's pray. 
Uh, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning that you've gathered us around your word. Uh, Lord, we're thankful that just as you asserted your victory as Jesus marched into Jerusalem with palm fronds and riding on the back of a donkey and as people spread out their cloaks as a sign of humility, Lord, we boast in the victory that Christ won for us, not by our own works, not by our own actions, but by the love of Jesus Christ as he accomplished that victory for us out of his love and out of his grace that he showers on the entire world. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you continue uh, to be with us as we continue to finish out the rest of the school year as we look forward to spring, that you would hold everybody, you would hold all of us in your hands of comfort and care and healing and wholeness, and that we, you would, by the power of your Holy Spirit, empower us and strengthen us to be witnesses of Jesus' love and his grace and his forgiveness to this world. And it's this prayer and all the prayers we have in our hearts we uplift to you. And all God's people said, amen. Church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Don't forget to hit that share button so we can continue to reach out and engage as many people as possible with the love of God, with the word of God, and how it all points to Jesus Christ. I know it's a little bit early, but we want to wish all of you mothers and grandmothers out there a very blessed Mother's Day. And we invite you to join us for worship this upcoming weekend as we continue to worship and give praise, honor, and glory to our Lord and Savior. So have a great and blessed weekend, and we will see you for worship. So y'all take care. Bye-bye.